This is the final video in our five-part series on the ethical, moral and cultural opportunities and risks of digital technology. In this video, we look at piracy and offensive communications and lay out colour paradigms and character sets. So the days of buying media on physical formats are almost completely behind us now. With high speed broadband and 5G, an increasing amount of commercial material is available to download or stream in digital form. For example, music, TV shows, movies and video games. Ever since commercial content began to go digital, the issue of software piracy has grown. There are those who argue for complete freedom of access, that the price of digital content is too high and should be shared freely. On the other hand, digital content industries employ millions of people. Then there is the cost involved in creating digital content. A major feature film takes a long time and a budget of millions to produce. We all benefit from digital content and without our money, these industries would cease to exist. These two arguments are at the far end of the spectrum and greatly simplify the problem. Most people agree that people should be compensated for the content they create. Governments take various measures to crack down on software piracy, but in an interconnected world, it has proven difficult to formulate a global set of standard rules and enforcement mechanisms. The UK Copyright Design and Patents Act and the Computer Misuse Act are two examples of laws passed to help reduce piracy, at least in the UK. The online world has also become a platform for self-expression. However, the ability to remain anonymous online allows people to say things or voice opinions they would never do in the real world. Social media platforms, chat rooms and online forums can quickly become a hotbed of hate speech and propaganda. The term internet troll refers to a person who actively sparks or fuels arguments online, often by posting abusive content or comments. Advocates for freedom of expression often cite Article 10 of the Human Rights Act, which states that we have a right to hold our own opinions and express them freely without government interference. It also incorporates the right to express our views out loud, for example, at a public protest. In addition, the law protects our freedom to receive information from other people, e.g. being part of an audience or reading a magazine. However, these human rights are not absolute. The Human Rights Act also states that although we have freedom of expression, we also have a duty to behave responsibly and respect other people's rights. You can see on the left that public authorities may restrict this right if they can show their action is lawful, necessary and proportionate. An authority may be able to restrict your freedom of expression, for example, if you express views that encourage racial or, say, religious hatred. So throughout this unit, we've talked a lot about the ethical and moral issues and impacts related to several areas of computing technology. But so far, we haven't covered much in the way of cultural issues. So what do we mean by culture? Well, it refers to the viewpoints and attitudes that reflect a country's identity, their social message. So, for example, you can see on the left here some of the typical cultural values of the UK. Now, we accept that different countries have diverse cultural values. At first, it can be hard to imagine how software could be associated with moral and especially cultural values. However, there's some great case studies that demonstrate just that. For example, social media. So social media tends to enshrine democratic Western principles such as freedom of speech, freedom of expression and the right to protest in an orderly manner. So we're going to look at an example here of how social media had a major impact in the Egyptian revolution of 2011. It started back on the 6th of June in 2010 when Khalid Saeed was beaten to death in the street by police officers. 
By late 2010, a Facebook page titled We Are Khalid Seed was set up and gained over 400,000 followers. Images of his beating were shared online hundreds of thousands of times. The Facebook page, along with many other social media sites, got together and asked for a day of action on the 25th of January 2011. Over a million Egyptians turned up in Cairo and protest and the hashtag Jan25 started to trend on Twitter. On the 27th of January, two days later, the government in Egypt shut down four major internet service providers at approximately 5.20pm, disrupting internet traffic and telephone services in an attempt to silence the voices that were spreading around the protest. Two days later, on the 29th of January, in a revolutionary move, Twitter launched a Speak to Tweet service, where Egyptians were able to call a telephone number and leave a message, which was then tweeted with the hashtag GEgypt. The local government then responded by trying to shut down cellular phone services. Eventually, this led on the 11th of February 2011 to the Egyptian president Hosni Mubarak being driven from office after 30 years in power. So you can clearly see here how we have an example of the sort of ethical, moral and cultural ideas of freedom of speech, often associated with many Western democracies, embedding themselves in social media software and that these allowed this Egyptian revolution to maybe take hold and grow much faster than they would have otherwise. So now we understand that technology can have cultural implications, let's look at three examples you may not have considered before, but you need to know about for your exams. And they are layout, colour paradigms and character sets. The impact of a software interface's layout is often overlooked. The internet and the software we use has a global audience, which has cultural implications. For example, most Western websites are laid out to suit a Western audience. Material is displayed as shown here from top to bottom, left to right. Typically logos are in the top left. However, this layout is not appropriate for all audiences. For example, countries where the main written language is Arabic read text from right to left. Furthermore, the position of key items such as logos, menus and buttons may need to be repositioned to make the viewing experience more natural for other audiences. So now let's look at colour paradigms. So the use of colours is another area of software interface design that has cultural implications. Colours can mean different things in different cultures. Blues are typically considered a very safe colour palette to use. When we see blues, we tend to think of water, sky and cold. However, someone else could interpret blue as heat. Red is a much more contentious colour. On the one hand, it commonly associated with feelings of love and care and health. On the other hand, it can also conjure negative feelings of censorship, prohibition, danger. Now, these are all personal interpretations, but on a cultural level, colours can have far more serious implications. In the West, green typically represents and is thought of as luck and nature. However, as an example, in Indonesia, green actually used to be a forbidden colour, while in China, green can mean infidelity. We must take great care when creating digital content for international consumption. We should do our best to choose colours that don't convey negative meanings in other cultures. Now, finally, we talk about character sets. Now, we've already covered what these are and how they can be used in an earlier video. 
In terms of cultural implications, we simply need to appreciate that there are many different character sets and they contain different subsets of internationally used characters. Consideration should therefore be taken when choosing a character set, and this of course will all depend on the chosen audience. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What do we mean by piracy and offensive communications, and what sort of actions do governments take against them? And what are some of the cultural implications of designing software and digital content in relation to layout, colour paradigms and character sets? So before you end this video, just pop your pen down and check out this little section we've got going beyond the spec. So keeping up with technological developments is something which ideally you should be constantly doing, especially if you're interested and fascinated in the subject. That can really help you answer many of the questions related to moral, ethical and cultural issues around computer technology. We've listed 10 websites here to help keep you up to date with a fascinating and ever evolving world of computing technology.